again, I'm going to express my thanks to Member of Parliament Daniel Kevchinski. I'm not sure everybody heard it before. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for hosting us here today. So, seeing as we're here in uh, the Houses of Parliament, I should probably start with the formal uh, thanks. So, I'd like to thank, um, first of all, Ambassador Rudowski for coming as well, the Ambassador for the Republic of Poland here in the United Kingdom. Thank you, Ambassador. I'd like to also thank Mr. Bruce Buck, the Chairman of Chelsea Football Club. I'd like to thank the Honorary Chairman of From the Depths, the legendary Avram Grant. Um, also, in his absence, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Edward Mossberg. Edward Mossberg is a 92-year-old Holocaust survivor uh, who is a huge supporter of ours in the Foundation uh, and a massive help in everything that we do. Um, and we have so many more people here as well. Um, our good friend, Philip, thank you so much for everything that you do, helping the Foundation, uh, building Polish-Jewish relations, uh, and just being a mensch. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, we must uh, note that we are very, very honoured to have with us Princess Katerina here today. Thank you so much for being here. The Princess, uh, for those of you who haven't uh, had the opportunity to meet her, uh, is, is a wonderful lady and you'll have the opportunity afterwards. But the Princess, for me, most interestingly, is also the great-granddaughter yes, of uh, Princess Alice. Who's buried, on the Mount who's buried on the Mount of Olives, and she herself was one of the righteous amongst the nations. So on behalf of us, thank you for being here. Thank you for your great grandma. <laughs> um, we also uh, would like to thank very much our good friends, Farley Freeman and Asha Moses, uh, for helping us with this incredible project, for getting on board and, and taking all my phone calls and dealing with me. Thank you very, very much. Pleasure. I also notice and thank our good friends at Lock Polish Airlines with Adrian Kubicki here, the uh, Director of Communications, <laughs> for partnering with us. Um, George Wyszynski, in his absence, we are very thankful to the family, to Maria, who is also the granddaughter of one of the righteous amongst the nations. Uh, thank you so much also for being here and uh, as the medal with, I believe, as well from Yad Vashem. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Uh, we're also very honoured to have with us two members of the Polish Parliament, uh, Posel uh, Tomaszewska. And Posel Pizik. Thank you very much. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Benjamin Krasinski as well. Uh, Benjamin is a great friend of ours, uh, a supporter of our foundation. Uh, Benjamin's come here from Poland uh, and Benjamin himself is the grandson of one of the righteous amongst the nations and he'll be sharing a bit of the story with us today. Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, also, thanks to Anja Niklarowicz, a senior journalist at the BBC who is the granddaughter of one of the righteous amongst the nations, and she'll be staring her story for the with us as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bartoszewski, Mansour Bartoszewski, uh, dealing with Polish-Jewish relations and the son of the legendary uh, minister, foreign minister and everything. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Uh, to be honest, I could carry on and go around every single one of you and say thank you. So, uh, I apologise to those I've forgotten, um, but thank you. Roland, thank you very, very much for all that you do at the Chelsea Foundation and Chelsea Football Club. Really massive help. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you. And to everybody else, thank you very, very much as well. Um, we're dealing in my foundation, we're dealing with the work connected to the righteous amongst the nations. We're dealing with the stories 
of the incredible non-Jews who stood up and risked their lives to save our Jewish brothers and sisters during the Second World War. And, you know, a, a lot of us often don't realize what kind of task that was. Because it wasn't as simple as saying, okay, you know, go there, we'll hide you, we'll take care of you, we'll give you food. This was an epic task that sadly was often, and we'll hear stories about this today, were often met with people giving their lives, attempting to save their Jewish neighbors. And this is just one part. Now, also being here today in the House of, Houses of Parliament, we should also acknowledge and give thanks to the British servicemen, to the British soldiers, who without them, who knows how the war would have ended. Without the leadership of people like Prime Minister Churchill and the brave troops, uh, including my great uncle, Private Solomon Fleischer, who died fighting, died at the Battle of Dunkirk, a young man, much younger than me, we really owe a huge debt of gratitude <coughs> to the British government and to the British armed forces. Um, so on behalf of myself, I'm sure all of us, through the Member of Parliament, thank you very, very much uh, also to the British armed forces. Last night, um, most of you would have seen on Instagram or Facebook, for those who didn't do it themselves, we lit the last candles of Hanukkah. We lit the last light, the eight lights of Hanukkah. And we lit them last night. And for me, the beautiful part of Hanukkah, it, and especially eighth night, every night we add an additional candle until we get to the point of last night where we have eight candles in total. And really the light that comes from these eight candles is incredibly strong and it really brightens the room. And to be here on the last few hours of Hanukkah with this light connects directly to the righteous amongst the nations. When just a few days ago I was speaking to my daughters, my young daughters Michal and Yael, and I was telling them about what we're doing with these taxes and what the idea is. And I was talking to them about the righteous amongst the nations. I realized that this was one part of Holocaust heritage and history that I could really speak about with my children. You know, so much of it we have to speak about, we have to educate, we can never forget what happened, we can never forget the German Nazi murderers, we can never forget the German Nazi death camps. These are places that we must always remember. But the stories of the righteous are this light of hope in this difficult time. These people who gave everything, often, to save the lives of their neighbors is something truly remarkable. For me, this journey started around about three and a half years ago, where I went for the first time to a small city near a town called Zwolle in southish of Poland a small city called Chiepelov, and we heard the story. We heard that in this town, in this city place, there's this Polish family with a story to tell. So I went, and I entered their home. The lady saw me, well, I knocked, obviously. She agreed to let me in, and as I entered her home, <laughs> I don't always. And as I entered her home, she looked at me, uh, and she burst out crying. Now, it happens sometimes that people see me and cry, but usually for different reasons. It's usually Avram when I ask him for something. But this lady saw me and burst out crying. And I said, you yeah, know, sorry. What's happened here? And she said, do you know that you're the first Jew to come into this house in over 70 years? Please tell me what happened. And she proceeded to take me to the back of the house, the house which has not changed in 70 years. These are very poor, simple people. And she took me with her son to the kitchen. 
and when we were in the kitchen she lifted up this rug on the floor and below lifted the floorboards and she said here my grandfather hid four Jewish girls and then she took me to the back of her property and she showed me a whole field of wheat and in this field of wheat there was one part a small square where no wheat would grow and she said Johnny do you know what happened here she said this is where my grandfather his wife and nine of his ten children were burnt alive for saving those four Jewish girls and I was completely shocked for me to struggle to say something is unusual. There I had nothing to say. I proceeded to go into the house. I went down into this small bunker. <coughs> and as I stood in this tiny, dark <coughs> place, I understood for a split second what it must have felt like to be stuck in this space in such inhumane conditions but also had such a strong feeling of gratitude and depth to this family who gave everything to attempt to save a few Jews. So really at that point I took it upon myself and turned it into a main mission of my foundation that we as the third and fourth generation after the Holocaust as millennials, as younger people must stand and must do something in honouring and remembering both the survivors those murdered but also the saviours there are many wonderful organisations doing many wonderful things for the righteous amongst the nations but there's always space for more. So six years ago we had the idea, uh, sorry, six months ago we had the idea to start a free car service for the righteous. Many of them are, most of them are in their 80s, 90s, if not older than that. And we decided that the right thing to do would be to start some kind of service to enable them to get around for free. So we were here, I was here in London with my children and on a chance meeting with Mr. Freeman, seeing the taxis outside of his home, I thought, what a great idea. <coughs> and this is where the idea started. And your support from the very beginning has been immense. Then I went to Avram and told him my crazy idea. And he said, you're crazy, but I love you. We'll do it. And then all the other wonderful people that helped me on the way. Um, and so really to inaugurate this project here in the Houses of Parliament is something incredibly special. It would also be remiss of me not to speak and mention, uh, especially when talking about the righteous. We're now uh, commemorating the 80th anniversary of the Kinder Transport, where thousands and thousands of Jewish children were saved by the British government, by those who agreed to bring in Jewish children and have them, in fact, in the synagogue uh, just this Sabbath. I opened the ark where the Torah is with my children alongside a friend of my late grandfather's who himself was one of those children on the Kinder Transport. So really, this is an incredible connection that we all have here, connected to the righteous and connected to doing the right thing to make sure that this memory continues. <coughs>